tribute to Otis Redding, sitting on the dock of the bay. But we're not sitting on the dock of the bay. We're on the dock dot org, sitting in the studio right here. Bailey, do you know that song? I don't think so. Sitting on the dock of the bay, Otis Redding, one of the greatest songs ever written. Very, very short song, like two minutes and I got to go look here. He didn't write that version. 36 though. seconds. Like two minutes, 36 seconds or 18 seconds. One of the shortest number one songs of all time. Uh, Otis, great, great artist. O Otis Otis came in studio, did the song, did the song. He came in ready to produce the song. He had an expensive guy like a Lucas ready to record. Yeah. And uh, Lucas, he seriously, he sang the first verse of the song, did the chorus, and then he whistled the famous song of year as a whistle verse. Yeah. He, I can't whistle it. You know. Nailed it. You didn't get it. But he has that as a so, so then he whistles the next <laughs> verse. Sound bite. He whistles the next verse and they stop and he looks at the guy and the guy says, What's up? He says, Well, I don't have the second verse yet. I'll work on that when we get back from this gig we gotta do in Michigan. So they jumped on a plane, the band did to go someplace, went and did the gig, came back, plane crashed. Oh wow. And all they had was the song with the whistle second verse. Huh. It immediately went to number one when they recorded it. And Otis Redding sitting on the dock of the bay. So one, always one of my favorite songs. I'm a good Southern boy. I love things sitting on the dock where you're watching water and stuff. And my dream is to get to heaven. One of my questions of God is, can we bring Otis up? I want to hear what verse two is going to be. <laughs> I've always wanted to know what it is. Get the whistle out. Let's hear it. So that's Otis Redding. I, I thought we just had to see if you'd know it. I thought we had you stumped on that one. But we didn't have you stumped. You no, had, I've yeah. I know that song. Okay. Yeah. okay. And, 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 and the players of that song are, you got Lucas recorded that with Ben. And who else was that? So, yeah, <clears throat> I did the drums and guitars and bass, and then um, Dustin Griffith did piano and yeah. organ. And Dustin had never heard her, Never heard song. the original song. Oh, really? So he thought it, we wrote it. Yeah. And so his organ <laughs> parts. He had never heard And he goes crazy. The keyboard draw him. <laughs> it's great. Here's what's great. We so needed, you didn't know it was a song? It's owned by RCA. So we needed to, RCA owns it now. Volt right. Did. But RCA has the rights, and when you put things up on YouTube or Facebook, they will mm -hmm. snatch it back down yep. if it oh, doesn't yeah. pass. Yeah. So because he played the way he did and threw the old church in there, because I told him, I want you to, it's, it's a Georgia song, but I want you to go Memphis Beale Street Blues on it. Right. So give me some blues, channel some Memphis Elvis, and, and, and get some Jesus in there. And so he got all that in there, and he had never heard the song, though. So what happened was it passed, it passed the test. It's significantly enough different wow. that it doesn't trip Facebook and YouTube that's awesome. locking wow. us down. So, because because uh, you put the record song up, it'll boot it in seconds. Right. You put this song up, you're all good to go. We had it checked out and they say, oh, it's good enough difference that, you know, good. So, it our song has nothing like it, just for the record. Just for nothing the record. like it. It's uniquely special. Not even, not even based off of the same song. Yeah. So, so, I hope you enjoy that. We're all about on the doc .org. We're supposed to begin the show on the doc.org. Check us out every Tuesday and Thursday. Lots of shows going out. Go back and check the first two episodes of this show. This is our third one. This is our walk away show. And we're about credo. Our credo says we're about conversations to propel your faith out of the shallows and into the deep. And you can use that song to get you out. Check us out on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Facebook, Roku, Rumble, and Sermonet. And we'd love to hear your comments on our social media partners, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, and Getter. Go get Getter and talk to us. And when you find us, hit subscribe, like, notify, tell other people about it, and just create all kinds of pizzazz. We appreciate that. And go to Patreon. You can download Patreon or you can go to our Patreon site and find On The Dock. And we'd love to have you as a partner or a sponsor. We have three tiers of partnership, four tiers of sponsorship. Love for you to find out. If you're a business or something and you want to do advertising with us, We'll work with you. We'll even do a show featuring you if you're a Christian business. If you want to be a partner on the show, we'll tell you how to partner. And we're trying to raise money right now to get a mic for Lucas. Lucas is our techno wizard, our executive director, and he's on camera today. Check out Lucas. He's real pretty, but you cannot hear him. We need a sponsor. Help us out. Lucas, we love you on camera, but we want to hear you on mic. Yes, he can't talk. We'll have to get a voice effect from him. Ben Alini next to me is my guest for this. He's my co-host for this entire series Worship Leaders of Southern Illinois. We're continuing that. We're in the walkaway series of season two super series. And we're back with, for the third show, wrapping this up, Joshua Corrales from Life Source Church in West Frankfort, Illinois. He's the worship leader there. And he's got with him, Bailey. Bailey, we're glad to have you with us, Frankenberg. She's been in the episode as well. She's one of part of his worship team there. And you guys have been around there quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. Been there a little bit. Yep. Yeah, go back and hear their story about it. We're going to have a great song with them afterwards. They're going to share a little bit of their worship skills with you. And 
in each of these episodes, we're sharing a worship piece from the Life Source team. Check them out. And by the way, Life Source has got a great church at a great time. And you may be thinking, I don't want to risk messing my church or I, I want to sleep late. Well, you can sleep late and go to their church. They don't even meet till 1130. That's right. On Sunday, so that rule's gone. Then if right. you say, well, I got to get some meat. I'm hungry. Don't worry. Thursdays and Fridays, they provide a meal before their service on Thursday. And they have recovery groups. If you need to recover from something, <laughs> you need some help. That's a church that can help you. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of churches that have a lot of gifts and specialties, but there's this helping people through addiction recovery. So if you've got something you're hooked on, what are Bailey, what are some of the things, uh, different recovery aspects? Is it alcohol, drugs? Um, honest, honestly, I think we just, we pertain to anything. It doesn't necessarily if have If somebody's to addicted to pornography, if they're addicted to any, alcohol, yeah, if anything. they have an actual addiction, you've got a recovery group that will help them work through that. Right. It's just, it's more of like a support system, a support group to just talk about um, what you struggle with and just letting everybody know that everybody has struggles. And And people there will have your back. They're going to work with you through the mess. It's a mess when you're in a cover. You can make mistakes. This is a church that will love you through it. And and they're churches where you're not going to surprise them or shock them either. They'll hear your story and you'll hear testimonies of how your story could could become something that God could get his hand on and change your life. Absolutely. Yeah, so I love it. They've got a great church. Go check it out. Again, Sunday's 1130. uh, uh, Thursday's 7 o'clock. Meal before that. You also have recovery groups on Friday. Meal before that as well. Check that out. Go to Life Source of West Frankfurt Facebook page. Check that out. And um, you want to get involved. Pastor Brent is a good man of God. And I know you'll enjoy what they've got going on. So we're here on the dock. We're ready to get going. Let's get into new questions. Here we go. <laughs> Question number one. Get ready. What are the biggest challenges? I mean, you guys, you know, I'm a preacher and I've been preaching now for 35 years. Mm-hmm. So I'm finishing a series up this Sunday. I might go one more week with it. I haven't decided. I'm, I may extend it one more week because I've got a little bit more maybe to say. Not quite sure yet. But I'm going to finish up a series so the Bible tells me so. I've been focusing on the Word of God, kind of get people good started. So I planned that in December, got it introduced here, really gone well. Mm-hmm. He's really integrated, great worship with it. has been powerful. People have been challenged. We've got people reading the Bible that haven't read the Bible this year. Um, kind of a little bit like what you guys are doing with your Mar- your Mary Challenge. Yeah. You know, something special to kind of kick the year off. Right. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next, you mm-hmm. know. That, that, that's always the... You know, because you got 35 years, I've got stuff I could go use. I've only been here 14. I've got 30 other years right. or 20 other years. So I could go bring up something from the past. But mm-hmm. I also got a couple things that God's got on my heart right now for people in the church. Yeah. So I, I just got to spend a little time with that. And in the next couple of weeks, I'll kind of figure that out. Sometimes I really get it laid out a little bit further ahead. I don't right now. Right. Um, I, I've got some feelings. Mm-hmm. I, I left, I, I was doing a Psalm series with 10 Psalms. I've got one Psalm hanging. So I may come back and do that one Psalm and wrap up. But the struggle you guys have as worship leaders every week, week to week, music choice. Yeah. You got to prep. You got to pick a song. You got to pick an old song. Maybe you got to try to try a new song. They may like the new song, but they may hate the new song. Yeah. You got rehearsals. You got to select your team. You got audio, visual, lighting issues. Tell me about what that looks like. What's that week look like for you and getting ready for that worship a uh, couple hours that you do each Sunday, each Thursday? Yeah. So, I mean, our week is very busy um, because there is a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of things that, you know, people don't necessarily realize um, as far as being a worship leader or worship pastor that you actually do encounter there, you know, like you were mentioning the sounds, the audio, the picking out the right songs and making sure that the sound is on and not, you know, cutting off. You guys use lyric slide. You have a lyric slide. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, We use easy worship. Um, It it makes it simple for us. I mean, we're very, um, (laughs) we're your, we're your uh, basic church uh, for as far as that stuff goes. So um, we do try to make it very simple, but there is, you know, a lot of preparation because you want things to stay fresh. You want them to, you know, not just hear the same stuff over and over When people show up to your worship team on Sunday morning to practice, whatever, is that the first time they know they're going to play that song forever? Or is there communication in advance? What, yeah, so I try to notify our team. I, I Really, my goal is like two to three days beforehand. I am awful. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I yeah, don't. Ba- hang on, Bailey. <laughs> ba- ba- Bailey just gave a confession. Ba- Bailey, yeah. <laughs> He means well. He does, but I can't really say much because every time it's practice time, I'm coming in 10, 15 minutes late. So. Can, can, can we be honest wah, here? Wah. If, if yeah. he, if he, this week, today is, today we're filming, we're taping, it's a Tuesday, and tomorrow, t- t- he's got Thursday. If he goes home tonight, stays up late, gives you the list for Thursday, fires it out to you, I mean, tonight, when would you actually look at it? 
Um, I would look at the songs and see what they were, and I'd be like, oh, okay, I know this one. And then I wouldn't really run through them. I know what I'd do. I'd time. open it like five minutes for a while. Oh, yeah, my, oh no. <laughs> you know. You know. Yeah. We kind of so, we kind of ran into that when we recorded the the song. The song, yeah. That. We did. With, my, with me. Yeah. Sometimes we do well. We mean well. But but in general, you're trying to get that together. I, I want to, but usually it is. A, I do... Make sure it's out a day in advance. You're, At the very yeah, latest, a day, in a day in advance. And the more simple your church is like that, you get away with a little bit more of that groundwork yeah. stuff. Got to give him the benefit of the doubt. He has five kids. He works out all the time. So just so, so when ben, it happens, it happens. Ben, does does, posted, does Lucas posted. let you get away with that? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> wow. I just came up. <laughs> you, you just pick him, pick him yourself? Yeah. Well, yeah. no, but no. I, I just gave up on trying to Oh, you gave up? <laughs> Now, I'm, I'm now, just a now lot Luke, of Lucas has experience at other churches, big, big, big churches. Some of those churches are they are they are they as short as we are in here? Or are some of them days, weeks, months in advance? Like three weeks in advance. <laughs> three weeks in advance. Yeah. 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 I just don't know if I would like that because I feel oh, like I things know. would be more like I like things to go more with the spirit to flow. Like now, now, you might have a list of songs, and then you know you you're getting something from the Lord. Okay, I wanted to. Yeah, fi- I, I wanted to. Not, fi- I try not to pick all of the songs. I try to like if I have other people singing or leading, I try to have their input. As well. Okay, I want to defend this though because my Methodism's coming in me. The Holy Spirit <laughs> spoke about Jesus seven hundred and a thousand years before He came, right. and it was the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost That's can speak true. three weeks. That's true. Just as strong yeah, in a song yeah, yeah. as He can right before the song. It just doesn't song. work for us. Yeah, <laughs> right. But that's, that's you, the same thing. Like you have to have a day. temperament that's going to God, seeking that. Yeah. So the person that's picking the three weeks, they could be led by the Spirit sure. to pick that out. Absolutely. They just yeah. have like satellite radio. Yeah, they got to say <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. So, but you can do that. It's just a different kind of a different yeah. J- jive. Yeah, and it, yeah. like you were saying, it, it's what works for us isn't going to work for every Right, church. right, right. And so we we try, this is what we do. It wouldn't this work what, for us either. This so, is what but, Pastor Josh at Life Source Church does. We we post it one day in advance. <laughs> one it, day it in advance. It works great. It. it works great. It. It. it works, and it works and for And you know what's amazing is whenever we come in there for worship practice, say Sunday morning, every song that I posted on Saturday may be different. Yep. So. I now, may come do you in there guys ever change thing. up your songs, or it doesn't work? Or you get usually fight? Sunday morning during rehearsal. Yeah, if yeah, where it's like, I'm like yeah, 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 let's one. try, let's try something else. Yeah, yeah that happened, and I think that's all fair. Well, um, yeah, you, he'll sometimes we'll sometimes practice songs that we're not even gonna do because he doesn't really like know them yet. Are you working on a yeah, development song? I don't know them yet. And or I'll just do like one bridge of one during. Like, okay, Lucas, working, the church so. that does three weeks out. If they come in on the rehearsal the week before, I guess they don't do the week before, but what do they do if they're not feeling that song that day? It doesn't matter. They suck it up and, <laughs> and do the song. We're professional musicians here. We play. Yep. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different mentality. It, it is. Yeah. And, it, and the thing is, we, we look at it tough. You know, we got smaller churches, but some of these churches have 10, 15,000 people going to it. Yeah. So right. it's working for them at some level. They may not be as holy as we think, but the holy people have 15,000 people. So, so it, Everybody has a little different mode, different ways to work. Well, I think that if honestly, if my if our church grew to fifteen thousand people, I probably do things a little bit different. Than yeah, what because I do you now. would have a worship staff, <laughs> you know and you would have your worship leaders at that level. More people Ben's like, no, it yeah, 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 everything more the same. I don't know if fifteen thousand people and could make me You hate to say rigid. this <laughs> when you get to that size of a church, you have more professionals at each position, and their level of expectations higher and they, they, they say well i need to know because i need to be prepared sure they're not going to play it like this they <clears throat> want to work on the song right because the craft changes mm-hmm. part of it too is they've probably got multiple service services and right it's like oh we've got to be we've kind of got to be out of here by a certain time yeah and, and we, we don't have a ch- service chasing us so you know if god takes over we, we'll do whatever you know right you guys don't either i don't think so you guys just have lunch you order subway and, and we're keep good going. yeah just keep going yeah i do you do got to feel for your brothers and sisters that have two or three services in a morning, yeah. And there are there are apostolic churches that run multiple morning services. Well, we've di- we've done we've two done services. A time. Yeah, it's during, tough. during COVID, we did do two services. And Outside, so, yeah. Well, so we would we would put. I'm on a time limit. I can only do these three songs and this, and I've got from 11:30 to 12:15. That's all I have. When I had three services in the Methodist Church, I had three services, three different. I had traditional, contemporary, blended. I had to go boom, boom, boom. It was tough. You it's know? a lot of hard work. I cut stuff out of sermons that I would normally never cut. Right. And, and but but three different groups of people got to come to church. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and God worked in it. I, do, was it my preference? No, but 
you know, got, that's what's who we were. And you're not going to say the same thing each time. Right. So you, different you crowds. even yourself yeah. are going to get something different out of it. No, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it is a challenge, but it you is. feel for your brothers and sisters, they got to put on, right. I mean, churches are doing super worship services where they're putting on a full production and you got to turn around and line that production up and go again. Yeah. And to be honest with you, you're on that platform and you're going to do it for the second or third time. And the people out there could care less that you've done two or three. They, it's their service. Got to be fresh. So I, I, there's other people that have that unique thing of having to be fresh three times a morning. I morning. applaud those. I do, do, I do too. I, I'm gonna, like, we've done it work. and I, I'm, I have too. And I, I, I just, I, I would say build a bigger building and, yeah. and stay with the one service. Yeah. I think that <laughs> yeah. they're honestly, they're better than me. Cause but then, I can't. But then if you <laughs> do that, if your attitude was, okay, we're going to build a bigger building so we can stay in one service. Yeah. And then you go now we need to raise money. People go, ah, oh, preacher, all you're talking about is raising money, yeah. raising money. I'm not going there anymore. Then you shrink back down. Right. You know? hey, that, and that happens. You, you know, well, you know, you, you get in that, that catch. Yeah, that's right. It, it, critics are tough. The challenge of balancing out uh, is tough. You you got to be careful not to calculate yourself by who what others are doing. Right. Do, do what God called you to do. Good. Don't you don't you agree? I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. That's good. All right. So so your biggest challenge is getting those songs. Um, how have you seen worship? This is probably the biggest question for this 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 time. I maybe have one more really strong one, but but how have you seen worship change? You've been in worship with your family mm-hmm. since the beginning, but yeah, but in the last five, 10 years, what do you see changing in worship that you didn't see five, seven, nine, ten 10 years ago? What's different? Good or bad or indifferent? What, 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 what do you see? I mean, I also, I think that um, worship for me personally is shifting more to the good now. Um, you know, mainstream artists, Maverick City, um, that's who I listen to is Maverick City. That's my my go to. Right. You know, they're doing a lot more spontaneous worship, and for me, I, I to me that's just whenever you are in the in the spirit and you're doing yeah. a lot of spontaneous worship, that just opens up a whole new realm of prophetic worship. That that realm, that opens up just for purity. What we were talking about before, um, it just allows God to move, and I just. That's what it's all about, man. It's just I, I think we've talked about that on quite a few of these shows of worship. Yeah. That that there would have been I remember when I was at Pawnee, uh, where I pastored for years at Methodist Church, and we were doing probably one of the most cutting edge contemporary services for a Methodist church anywhere in our region at the time. Mm-hmm. And and they had a whole Saturday Night Live experience. It was deeply musical and it was good. But it was it was it was even as though it was complex musical. Uh, Lucas could tell you from that service, it was highly planned out. There were so many songs, huge worship team, you know, 10 or 11 people musically, 20 vocalists, mm-hmm. crazy lead singers, and then choir vocalists. And it, it was good. It was we, People came because the music worship was powerful, but right. it was highly rehearsed. They would rehearse on the Saturday before, like hours. I mean, like half a day of worship. Oh, wow. It was it was intense. And, and you know, I, I was going out to IHOP while I was the pastor there, I helped send Kansas city international house of prayer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was there at the beginning year when they started doing the harp and bowl worship yeah. and just, they would cut loose in the spontaneous worship. Yeah. And it was so God would just move. Mm-hmm. And I brought back some of those videos and clips. I took them out to see it. And, and the, the worship leader at the time loved it too. Mm. And they came back and he wanted to schedule it. Right. Like here we will do this rip and we'll rip it like this and we'll go five minutes. And he, he actually choreographed the spot and then he would plan the readings and what would be said. And he wanted to just make it happen and have that same spirit. And I had to take it. We went all the way back to Kansas City. I took him back because it didn't work. Right. I went back and I said, now tell them how you do this. They say, we cut loose and we trust God. Mm. <laughs> I love it. And yeah. he said, how would we do that with all this? Planned spontaneity. And their, ba- <laughs> their worship team at IHOP is this big. They got, you know, 10 people and 10 people over here and they're just doing, they trust the Lord. Right. They trust their musicians and their worship leader and whoever the prayer leader is. Right. I saw that our team there never got it right. We mm. tried, we did sure. moments of it, Yeah. but since I've been away from there, I've seen more and more come in. And over the last 10, 12 years, 15 years, I've seen spontaneity become something that was weird yeah. to very normal mm-hmm. today yeah. and almost the desired thing of the heart of a lot of churches and, and Ben's outstanding at it. Our team's very good at it. Yes. And I love it. I, I just love it. So, so I would agree that may be one of the biggest things that's changed. I think so. I mean, cause you know, 10, 15, 
20 years ago, you look back at worship and it, you just didn't see that. It wasn't, there wasn't a whole lot of spontaneous. No, you had to go to Kansas city. I mean, you literally had to know somebody out there or if they came, you got to experience or you saw the prayer room, you would see it. It was for those weird exotic, you know, you didn't see a lot of it. Right. Now, we all come from, a if you kind of have a Pentecostal background or a spirit-filled background, we have all understand when you go into minor key and you're going to play and you're going to wait on somebody to give, give a prophecy in tongue. There's a lot of churches, early charismatic movement. You would have third song of the morning, minor key, we're going to strum a little bit, and sister so-and-so is going to go get it. You know what? I think a lot of plays into the spontaneous worship now, because I was sitting there thinking about what you were just saying, as far as like the old Pentecostal apostolic churches, whenever they would do that, but they would always be, it would always be up, 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 be, you know what I'm saying? And yes. they're just waiting. But I think what's really it changed. Was, not, yeah. yeah what's really changed is um, the um, technology through worship um, and different and the ability to use different systems and being able to use pads and being able to use synthesizers and stuff like that. And it just kind of creates a more like a homey feel like you're, right. you're at home in your living and room. More, I, and I, just my, mine would be immersive. Yeah. It's almost like you went into the shower at us group of people in the sauna right. in the shower and you just kind of, you're just encompassed. Yeah. And you're just, you're just surrounded the by other, the presence the of The other God. felt when I was, my first movement out of the Presbyterian Methodist was going to my wife's spirit filled church in Decoy and Christian Fellowship mm-hmm. and then would watch them give a, somebody give a word in tongues, give a word in prophecy. Yeah. All cool. But I could tell you as much as being a Methodist that that was going to happen where it happened yeah. as much as I could tell you the choir at my church was going to sing a special sure. sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so was going yeah. to have a response. It was very I don't want to say choreographed, but expected. Right. It, it wasn't spontaneous. Yeah. It may have been spontaneous what was being uttered, mm-hmm. but it always ended the same way. Yeah. And it was in King James. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? You right. know, you know, okay. But my point is today I see what I think of a Levitical priest just going free yeah. and like David dancing before the Lord. Yeah. I feel that in what I see today in the spontaneity. Yeah. I'm, I think that I think you're right. I think that could be the greatest strength we have today is the freedom of pastors and worship leaders to just cut loose in worship. Yeah. And, and 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 when you have that tension of a service, what we talked about over over meal we had together just briefly, how some churches are more choreographed, you're going to have a hard time doing that. Yeah, I think that um, people in general are more receptive to worship now than I, what they were. I agree with that too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. B- because there was a time when you would bring an electric guitar on stage and people would look at you like you're. Oh, they hiss! They hiss! Oh my gosh! You you were you were of you were of Satan. You were not of uh, you being used of God because you were using an electric guitar. Yeah. And I think now, just because of the way that not only has technology improved, not only have we, you know, shifted into a more spontaneous worship, but people are just more receptive to worship now. Yeah. Do you think that? I mean, I I I. I there's a hunger for worship today that I think is there. Yeah. But I also that. think there's a hunger, but I also think there's a there's a shallowness of people. There, there's a battle right now of people to to release themselves to that. And they're you know, everybody feels like they're being watched, they're being viewed, they're being well, sure followed. They and I think there's now that's the tension. Sure. Yes, everybody desires it. <clears throat> but I, I, I a quote I saw this this weekend was that uh, that our friend uh, Jerry used about the Bible. He says, you read the Bible, but when you read the Bible, the Bible is also reading you. Yeah. When you worship, you're worshiping God, but the Holy Spirit's also wanting to worship back with mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And it's one thing to desire. It's another thing to release yourself to it. How do you get to that point right. where we help people as worship leaders and pastors to release? Understanding that I cannot lead worship like Ben. Right. Ben cannot lead worship like me. Right. We cannot lead worship like each other i i struggle with this just on not in a worship aspect but on a ministering and preaching aspect i always i've always battled this so hard is i was like i can't preach like pastor brent right i can't give the word like pastor brent but we don't need another brent. we don't need another brent. that's right i don't need and we don't need another Be you. and and if people were just yes we we're more receptive i can learn from brent my worship is going to be different i can grow from else's. it yeah. i might even i might even learn from some of the things he does that i would like to do sure some are ideas Absolutely. but don't try to copy sure be authentically you and, and that's the right. same thing goes for worship yeah you know understanding that if i'm receptive and it's spontaneous and i'm not going to worship the same way as somebody else i may just stand there with my hands raised right. or or i may just stay there and just just soaking in the presence of god or i may be dancing but either way that's just you worship you mentioned in the previous episode that one of the things that, that 
that works really well in your church is the testimony of being real. Yeah. People giving testimony of themselves. Yeah. I think the other thing is whether you're a worship leader, whether you're a worship singer, whether you're a preacher, yeah. you need to be you in that as well. Absolutely. Be, be who God called you to be. Yeah. And, and, and then being the real people get a real expression of you. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't think we need to copy other people. I think we need to learn and grow from other people. Yeah, absolutely. But, and together we make up the body of Christ. So I, I think that's a good word. I, I really that's do. why I like to watch a lot of like live worship, um, like on YouTube, just because it, it gives me like an idea of how to gain that spontaneous worship of just like of watching and learning of to see like, how other people are right, able to free themselves. Right, and, and um, it helps a lot because there's 19 things you can be thinking of. I mean, right. you. All of us can do it because you're thinking about time or this or I miss that or that or somebody's got mm -hmm. something too loud. Like on uh, it was on I think it was on Wednesday. It was either Wednesday or Sunday. I kept hearing something. I thought it was somebody's phone. It was actually my phone. My <laughs> phone was still playing the service. I hadn't turned the audio down. Oh, no. I thought, who is that in the front row? That won't turn? And then I realized it was me. You know, and so for, for a few minutes, I'm trying to get, get in the flow of things. Yeah. And I couldn't get in the flow because of the distraction and the distraction was actually my own fault. Right. right, but it's okay. I got that fixed. I just stop and fix it, and then I jump back in it. Right. We're, we're going to fight those things. Sure. How do you recover from that? How do you get back in the flow? Because when you lead, you lead, and yeah. you see things. You see the mother fighting the child back here. Or this kid's gone nuts, or or this person over here is snoring. You know, and you can yeah. see every breath, and they're drooling, yeah. and and you're in the word, and all of a sudden, oh, he's drooling. You know, yeah. you can't just laugh. You know, you 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 have to fight that. And I don't care how spiritual you are. I mean, you're in. You're in front of people. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna offend anybody by saying this because we have a very um, unchurched church. District. We have we have a lot of people that just didn't grow up in church, and they <laughs> like they like to run in and out of service. They yep. like to be, you know, talking. They like to do different things. And oh, a lot yeah. of times when we're up there worshiping, we'll have our 75, 100 people up front worshiping with us. But whenever you're up just a little bit higher, even though it's only like six or eight inches higher, you can see everybody in the back that is, you know, running around. Running like, I can around, tell you which one. I can tell you the people in our church that go to the bathroom in groups. So, like, yeah. how, you know how girls go, guys go by themselves, but girls go in groups? Right. I can tell you which ones at what time and what time in the service are yeah. going to go to the bathroom in groups. Oh, yeah. I can. Yeah. I, same. But yeah. I think but I think what we do as worship uh, worship Offering leaders and time, also worship, worship pastors is we see it. Yeah. We, we acknowledge it. But we have to do two things. One, get our minds still on him because we're still leading. People are watching us. Right. We're still leading. And then two, make sure that even though that they're moving, that everybody else is still staying centered. Oh, yeah. And that's, I think that's oh, one yeah. of the biggest challenges. And sometimes when the, when, the, when the baby's crying, I will talk stronger or louder yeah. and try to make sure that to I'm trying to help. their attention. Well, and I'm trying to help that parent. They're fighting a child. And if I go a little stronger, then I... They don't have to fear that that's such a distraction. Right. And as a parent, yeah, I mean, I fear. I feel for him. I feel for him because I, I mean, I've got an eighteen-month-old daughter that she likes to run around and you know, cry and be loud right. and things like that. So I, I get it, but I mean, at the same time, though, we're still leading. So, but we it's gotta, the battle. We yeah. talk about that here, engaging people. And yeah. Starting. At the same time, you want to worship, but again, that's why you got to come in rooted already yeah, yourself. Yeah, exactly. You're not trying to get something from them. You're trying to lead them. That's why to something. Why, right. That's why you need right. to do the Mary challenge. Yeah. So that whenever good. you're coming in, that if you do hear a distraction or if you see something, it isn't going to bother you because you're already rooted in him. Yeah. Or, or pray for the people that are going through that. Yeah. Hey, hey, help that. Yeah, I pray for the child. I used to have I, people would tell me that when children cry in the service, I had a couple of prayer intercessory people. Uh, they're no longer, they're with the Lord now. But they would say that, that one dear brother in the Lord here, he believed that was like, spirits trying to distract the crowd mm. and so when he would see a child get restless and start crying he would move over and place near to where they were and begin to pray and bind the spirit and just pray for peace on that child mm. and he would believe sometimes that he said there was one time there was a year going on where he said every time i would be hitting a spot about the holy spirit and he could see it penetrating he said it was interesting a child would start crying and mm. he began to realize that that was a counter spirit right. to what i was doing and he began to counteract that yeah. Now, I'm serious. Yeah, no, and that's, so intercessors yeah. began to realize yeah. that was an opportunity. It wasn't a challenge. He saw it as an opportunity. opportunity. Right. So he began to sew prayer. Yeah, that's And good. I could see, I got to where, I never knew he did that until he told me one time. And then I'd see why, I never wonder why he would move around because he's one of our ushers. Mm. And he said, well, I'm just moving over to pray for that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And one that's day, one day there was a young man that was in the audience and he was, he was mumbling things. I thought he was disturbed. I knew kind of the family. They'd been away from here. And I... I saw him move over in place of that. And afterwards, the service said, brother, why'd you go over by him? He's not a baby. He says, 
well, he was talking about hurting you. Hmm. He was, he was, he was making threats. Oh, wow. And he says, I was praying against the devil that was touching him. And I said, what do you mean? He said, there was a devil on his shoulder. I could see it. Oh, wow. Well. Mm. So, I mean, when that worship battle's going on, there's right. all kinds of battles. Absolutely. It's like a football game. You know, you see the ball going down the field, but over here there's two two linemen and a defensive yeah. guy just pommeling each other. Right. So, so you see that more from the worship platform. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a distraction. It can be. Yeah. Sometimes it's unnecessary roughness. Right. Mm-hmm. But in the, mid- the, in the middle of that, you still are carrying <laughs> the team with you yeah. and lifting up the name of Jesus. What, That's a, it. what a challenge. It's a battlefield. Yeah. It is. It's a little more for you guys than us because as preachers, we tend to, there might be one person distracting us or one person moving. It tends to be smaller. You have the ability for people to move naturally so they can hide their distractions or be more. Well, I think, and I think that I'm not knocking our, our pastors and saying that they don't have a challenge during it because they do. You guys do. Whenever you guys are giving the word, I've experienced it. Um, Cause you know, one person in, in a quiet room, one person can be very distracting. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. But Whenever you're filling the room with a little bit more noise and a little bit louder music, yeah, you can things. hide stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they, I don't know. I don't know if they necessarily hide it or if they amplify it. And so I think that sometimes we face a little bit more distractions on that end because it, I, that's just. I mean, it's I, louder. I think these are real things that, to help with. But I love the idea of seeing those distractions as opportunities. I think you guys talked about it in the first episode real good. We'll, we'll move to the last question here, but. You talked about uh, being a breakthrough. This could be some distractions exactly. could be somebody else's breakthrough moment if you begin to see them that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, last biggest question here: um, What are the biggest challenges, changes you see coming up in the next year or two or three that you need to begin to make in worship? You know, if you see spontaneous worship as the biggest change in the last five, ten years, mm-hmm. where do you see the metamorphosis of worship needing to go in the next year or two? Be prophetic for a moment. With us, help us see kind of where you're thinking, where you're moving. What, what do you see developing out there? What What is something special in your mind? I think just kind of being aware of knowing that worship is the start of the service. Like worship is what ushers in the presence. Um, worship is what brings in, um, you know, the spirit of just. Uh, you know, we we set the we set the mood for what the pastor is about to preach on, and I think that really takes a big a big responsibility and a big step into um, just being unified. I like that. We set the mood. Yeah. Kind of puts a little pressure on you, though. Yeah, it does. No, I like that. I would. That, I never thought about that. Kind of kind of sets the field for it, so to speak. What, how about yourself? Where do you, where do you see worship moving? What, what do you see the next big movement? So, well, I was just going to say, didn't, I, I don't want to be wrong here, but didn't they send musicians out into battle? Stuck them, you know, <laughs> even in Civil War, they sent the drummers out yeah. to, to hold the first, pace, to kind of set first. the pace. Yep. And then in the early wars battles, there are many times in the Bible where they set the musicians completely ahead. And kind if of, they didn't send them ahead, they lost. They right. lost. They lost. Because there was didn't a cadence. Who, and they would drum them in and drum them out. Yeah, the beat would tell them what to do. The trumpets would would give them direction to go. You know? Yeah, I think I think the um, there were no radios, no cell phones. No, no, no. I think that over the last five ten years, spontaneous worship has really um, taken a, 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 a its own position right now in worship. Um, I think our challenge, if I may, over the over the next five ten years, is not getting comfortable with spontaneous worship. Um, understanding whenever spontaneous worship happens it's prophetic right. that right. that is a prophetic worship that's when we can really truly minister when we're up there playing when we're up there singing that's us prophesying over the church I like that. that that's us speaking life over the church that's us giving a word to the church and i think that our challenge will be is if we're not if we're not prayed up, if we're not in the Mary challenge, if we're not doing the things that God has called us to do as far as being in our word, worship, and word daily, I think what's going to happen is if we're not careful, that we'll lose the effectiveness of spontaneous worship. Yeah, We'll lose the effectiveness of, of prophetic worship. And I don't want to lose the effectiveness of prophetic worship. Well, I've, I, I've waited my whole, I've seen prophetic ministry coming on like that, spontaneous worship coming on. For now, I've been here 14 years. I saw it begin the, the first year or two at Pawnee. So that's 24 years I've been watching it come yeah. on. Okay, 24. Yeah. There was like, it was unheard of 24 years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay, now it's a, a desired thing in most yeah. churches. So it's one of those things that once you get it, though, 
God can speak through it, but if people don't respond to what God's speaking, God will go quiet because he went quiet in the Bible for about 400 years. And that's what I'm saying. I want us to be sensitive to it. Because and we're in a ve- yeah, you- we're in a powerful season as 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 a church, not just as life source, not just as community. The world is crumbling world. around us and needs hope. Yes, and we're in a powerful mm-hmm. season of worship as a church body as a whole. No matter your denomination, no matter where you're from, we're in a powerful season of worship. And if we're not careful, then we could easily slip back to where it was before, and it just be cookie cut. Yeah, exactly. I don't, if I don't, you're rooted I'm, in prayer and in the word, you're you know the leaders and the pastors are gonna know if your team is isn't if they're not you know if they're slacking off and being in prayer and staying together. When, when, when the teams when the warriors went into battle, even in the early military days, they, they sent the banner carrier, the yeah. flag carrier, the banner because yep. they rallied around the banner, mm-hmm. Jehovah, Jehovah Nisa, mm-hmm. and then they sent the musicians in, the, yeah. Levi, the Levitical worshipers. Yeah. We go in and they would. They would almost, the worship sets the cadence. Yeah. So you kind of mentioned it sets the mood. Yeah. That would be very similar. I think I love that idea maybe in this generation, not just spontaneous worship, but the mood's been set and God's now invited to speak to us. Right. But then there's a beat that tells us we got to drive in there and we got to win the battle. Well, you know, what, We're not what sh- winning right now, though. Yeah, yeah. We're not winning the battle. We may be winning individual battles right now. The church is losing ground. Yeah, and on that topic, our, our job, our, our job, our responsibility, our whatever you want to call it as worship leaders, as worship pastors, is whenever we go up there to lead worship, we are being used of God to soften the hearts of people. Mm-hmm. So that way, whenever pastor comes up there and gives the word, that they can receive it. Right. So if we're not if we're not prayed up and we're not being led of God, even if we are not doing spontaneous worship, even if we're just we are three weeks ahead and we are picking up our songs, but if we're not being led of God, we're not truly softening the hearts of people. Whenever pastor gets up there and gives the word, right? So that way they can receive it. The word's there to rebuke, teach, correct, train us in righteousness. That's what it, that word's there. Second Timothy to do. three sixteen and seventeen. That's I it. preached on it Sunday. So yeah, that's, I say it every week. So. And that's what it's there for. But if we are as worship leaders aren't prayerfully um, connected with God to be able to pick the right songs, to be able to lead worship effectively, then we aren't setting the mood. We aren't softening the hearts of people. And I totally agree with that, and I think that's important. I think the challenge of our moment is going to be, though, I've never seen more spontaneity in worship than I've seen today. I've never seen... I, I think there's a hunger amongst people for worship. Yeah. Yeah. I, the Cedar Sessions movement here. It's we're, amazing. We're, I, what's great is what you described in previous talk about was about you being you and Ben being you and, yeah. and maybe Maya Lopez being Lopez. And I love how these worship leaders are coming together and just being each of themselves, yeah. but together collectively making each other greater in themselves. Right. So so the, there's a sh- iron sharpens iron. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and worship's been elevated in our region because yeah. of it. I mean, highly elevated, well, encouraged. I, I believe that. I've had the pleasure of being a part of Cedar Sessions yeah. and Ben, um, Israel, all of them have just poured into me and and, and elevated my worship, not just for our church, but for me personally. And I, I agree that th- that's the high, I think it's the, it's the strongest I've seen. There was a movement like this amongst youth pastors when I was 35 years ago, uh, St- Steve McHugh and Bill uh, Swinford and all of us were, we, we had a whole youth explosion festival mm-hmm. here. God really moved amongst the youth pastors. I've seen it amongst senior pastors at times. Right now I see the worship pastors of having a movement. Yeah. But what I'm concerned about is there's no time where I've seen the church failing. I'm not saying life source is failing because I sure. think you guys are excelling at what you're doing. Yeah. But I think collectively, w- w- whether you go to West Frankfurt and you're fighting over who's going to use which bathroom in the in the school, sure. something that wouldn't even been discussed 30 years ago when we didn't have spontaneous worship, right. or maybe they weren't very religious, but but the culture around us is just melting yeah. down. The morals and ethics are Katie bar the door. Yeah. Yet we've got the deepest worship we've ever had. But how do we take that relationship with God and cause? others to be caught on fire right. with the fire of the Holy Spirit. There's a bridge, there's a gap forming, a separation. And I realize free will's in there. We can't control people. Sure. And maybe that heat is there to protect some of us sure. right now that are trying to hold on to God for dear life. Yeah. Right. But at some point in time, there has to be a release yeah. of the good news in a way which lifts up the name of Jesus and draws not just the people that like music, but all men. I'm concerned about we need revival. Yeah. Yes. How do we transition that with this worship momentum? I think so. I think part of the, the challenge right now too is like it you know it just 
it has to remain honest it has to remain vulnerable and it has to remain authentic yeah and right now i think we're facing a challenge as worship leaders um that worship leaders have never had to face in the past i think we live in an era where um like you can be a career worship leader and make a lot of money right and it's like i think that's a huge temptation for a lot of people and when (laughs) it's like probably pretty easy to 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 lose sight of the genuine the pursuit after God and worship and um, just kind of go through the motions. And I think that's a huge challenge right now with our culture, our church culture in general. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, anyways, just to... I, yeah, I see God move. You can take you can take a basic percussion instrument and the, and the fire of the Holy Spirit and go into a place in the darkest parts of Liberia and share the name of Jesus and see entire communities come to Christ. Right. And here you can go set yourself on fire for Jesus and you can see revival a little bit here and there, but we're not seeing communities come to Christ like we need to see. We've got to see the church get on fire in a way that begins and not just, I realize maybe we're in a season where we're going to be insulated. God's going to use the fire to keep us Mm -hmm. protected. And that may be the season we're in. Okay. But at some point in time, you got to release that. The, yeah. the, the ark opens up and you go out and repopulate the earth with believers. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're really right there. And I know you guys are assaulting your community for Christ. I see mm-hmm. that. Yeah. But I don't see a lot of that happening in our region right now down, down this way. Like it, like it should be. I see people migrating from churches to a few churches and kind of shutting the door on the ark. Here's the thing. Worship cost. It, it costs, it costs oh, something. Good. And, you know, I've talked about this before with you, Pastor, is, you know, like the woman with the alabaster jar. Yeah. It costs something for her to pour it out. Everything, a whole year's pay. It, it costs something. Yeah. And we have to understand as worship leaders that it's going to cost us something. It's going to cost pastors something to let that go in the church as well. Yeah. And you're going to have to deal with people that don't want it, elders and deacons yeah. and leaders that want to control the flow. They want to maintain things. They want things done a certain way. Yeah. It requires not just worship leaders and pastors, but church leaders sometimes they just get stinking out of the way. Let the Holy Ghost go. But yeah, and with the cost though, we have to understand that it does cost, and we but we do have to remain pure. It's tough. And it it's has tough. To, we have to remain because pure the devil at all costs doesn't want that spirit to be released like yeah. that, right? So la- la- last question, we're gonna we'll wrap up here. But I, I the biggest challenge we all face, whether it's pastors, or worship leaders, yeah. is dealing with the critics. And we're gonna yeah. end on a light note. We've talked about very good things, and I think go back. I encourage you to go back and watch. All this ep- there's three episodes for the last two, and I think you're going to get some great stuff out of this. So so check that out. But but one of the things that we deal with is criticism, especially at the worship leader, yeah. pastor. Uh, if the worship leader's not getting it, if the pastor's getting it on behalf, somebody says, well, I don't like what the worship leader did, or, or <laughs> oh, I thought the pastor was born today. You know, can you do something about him? Or they didn't like these two songs, but they wanted more of this. We, we all deal with our critics. How you deal with those critics is something that says who you are. One of my one of my favorite. Uh, things in Disney uh, in the past was the Muppets. And I believe the Muppets can teach us a lot about church. So let me show you this wonderful clip that I have. And I, I just want you to know that in every church, now there's, this is an audio clip with a picture with no motion. That's because we don't have the rights to show the video. So we're showing the audio with the still video. So we don't want to be in trouble with Disney. They get ugly. Yeah, you know, they We don't have like the that. money for Disney. Yeah. But I want you to think about these guys because these two guys, Stotler and Waldorf, we have in every church. Bravo! I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good. It though. could have been a lot better. I didn't really <laughs> like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. I was terrible. Get him away! Hey, boo! Boo! <laughs> okay, yeah. Every church you had that. They, you I have. I, I. I had a woman in this church uh, about fourteen years, thirteen years ago, twelve years ago. Fourteen total time, twelve. And I was her, be- I was her hero. Right. I mean, I was the best pastor she's ever had. <laughs> and in the process of dealing with an issue with her husband, I finally had to sit down with her and say, you're the problem. You need to change this and this, mm-hmm. or it's going to cost him everything in his ministry, in his life. Right. And, and I went from being the best person to her worst nightmare. Oh, I'm sure. Oh yeah, very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. She's fire breathing after that. And I, I knew before I told her that was going to happen. I told 
the closest people around me, but I said, it's got to be said to her. I, I have to love her enough to tell sure. her that she's the problem. Yeah. You're going to cost him his ministry. Right. It cost him his ministry. Yeah. Okay. And when, when, when it cost him his ministry, I went to her and said, I told you it cost him his ministry. Hmm. And you're the one who cost it because he couldn't get on top of it and, and deal with it in the proper way. And, and, and not only did she hate me, but she got 12 other people hate me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You deal with that. And I, I, yeah. I, I did the right thing. I told people before it happened, what would happen. I still love them enough. I'm still would have done it again, but it gets your teeth. How do you recover? How do you guys handle it when people just kind of skin you live over the music or they don't like this, or they just think you're terrible or you let so-and-so play and they never liked so-and-so they used to date so-and-so and they didn't know them before they were saved. You, how do you deal with the criticism and get up there the next week and give people your heart again? Yeah. And then again, you want the real answer? Yeah, I want, you the, want the professional I want the, answer. I, well, yeah, okay, give us the professional answer. Okay. And then we'll get the real answer. Okay. Well, like we that. have to address it prayerfully <laughs> and we have to address it w- with just them, just being, being honest with them, listening to them, understanding, and then trying to address it and fix it. Okay. Because that, that, the, the real answer is everybody has a right to an opinion and, and there could be some truth in the opinion. Yeah. But let's just be honest, it, it is painful. Yeah, it is. And then you realize you also learn that. When people point finger, they got like three coming yeah. back at them. Yeah. So I have learned a bit more lately in the last, I mean, lately in the last 15 years. Yeah. I've learned when people are my biggest trouble, I pray for them. Yeah. Because I know they've got more going on. Yeah. Than if I become their biggest interest, then they've got a pathetic life. Yeah. Yeah. It's usually, it's not about you. It's not. And it's hard at the time when you're being skinned alive because it's your skin being, they're peeling mm-hmm. off. Yeah. So it feels like it's about yeah. you, but it's not. How do you manage that? How can you help uh, young worship leaders? You're going to get it. Joshua's going to tell you how to work through that in the real way. <laughs> I don't know if you, uh, you know what the honest question is? And, yeah. I, and I do, I, I ask this to them and it's, it's a hard question to ask somebody, but this is the truth. So take my advice. Don't take it. Yeah. I ask them, what are you doing to help the situation? Yeah. How are you helping it? How are you helping? Th- these guys you, sit up in the balcony. Bone. Are you, if you're mad about the lights and what are you doing to help? Fix the light situation. Yeah. If you're mad about the sound, what have you given and donated to help fix the sound situation? Yeah. If you if you're mad about the church not being clean, what have you done to come up here and clean it? Yeah. You're worried about people gossiping about you. How many people have you went and gossiped about? And what about the 27 people that had a good time today that you could have been praying for? That's what I'm saying. So yeah. they don't they don't like that answer too much. But so that's pretty that's good. better than mine. But I have to be honest with you. Your answer is a pretty darn mature answer for a guy that's as young as you are. For sure. Part of that is you've been around a worship family for a long time. Yeah. So you've seasoned in yeah. that. Right. You've got some years on you. Yeah. How does it feel? I mean, Bailey, I know you're on the little bit outside that loop, but it, it, dealing with criticism as a worship person, <laughs> you know, because worship people can, are performers. I mean, you're putting your sleeve out there. I mean, it's your music, it's your worship, yeah. and it can hurt. Cause you've already been vulnerable. You know, you tore, you, you've been up since seven o'clock. Yeah. You've been there all day. Yeah. And about three o'clock, somebody says, well, that really sucked. Yeah. And you go, okay, great. I saw that you were two hours late, you know? Sure. You know, and, and you, you want to be that. real with them. You want to be real. You want to be real. You have to understand that <laughs> you, this is the, this is the part of being living born again and not letting your flesh react. Well, that's a really good word. And I think that's true too. Not let, don't let your flesh react. Well, I and, want to and, let my f- flesh and, react sometimes. And, and I'll be honest with you. I, I, I was more the proper my answer. Flesh reacts way too much. My, I was more the proper answer. My first 15 years yeah. about the last 10 or 12 years, I would get a little psych- psychological with them and kind yeah. of work it back and go, you know, what's going on with you? Really? Yeah. You, you probably got a hangnail. Can I help you with it? I'm a little more these days. I don't, really want people mad. If I thought somebody treated Ben bad, I would, I would destroy him as a pastor these days in the I name of I'm, Jesus. I think I'm right the there with you Jesus. with certain people. If it, I, I'm right there with yeah, you, I would probably, I, I just don't tolerate thing. a lot more of it these days. No, I, I, I tolerated more and I think I probably should be more tolerant, but I just want to be honest with you. I think there's too much at stake and I, I don't really like it when people are giving everything they have to do something and somebody sitting on the back being yep. a, a I, Muppet man, yep. you know, uh, to those that are complaining about your worship leader, to those that are complaining about your pastor, worried about your church, it's not about you. See, my new phrase in the last it's year and a half, two years, man. maybe five years is move on.org. Yeah. I mean, you I'm, know, I th- love you. There's a lot of bad churches out there. Go join one of them. Yeah. But but it's one thing, if you're going to be, about I, you. and I think if somebody's being critical and they're willing to help you with it, I want that. 
you gotta be careful of a critical spirit, though. No, but but if you're being critical, and you're just going, fight if you're just going, fist you know, fight. you know, the lighting's not very good here. Could I come volunteer my time to help with that? Absolutely, you can, dude. You're the dude we want. Yeah. You know, I I see y'all not organized with the music. Right? Can I come and organize your music? You know, Absolutely, when somebody's offering themselves. I think you can. That's the difference between a critical spirit and then. That's a player, to yeah. not somebody in the stands. Yeah. I do not like people in the stands chafing no. at me. And I coached football for a long time. I tolerate all that stuff, but not anymore. So yeah. I do think we're in a game now where it's no longer just a game. We're now in a battle of life and death. Yeah, absolutely. And and the Spirit of God is counting on us yeah. to hold the line. So I, I kind of am a little more protective of our people today these days than I should yeah. be. And, and maybe that's a sign of my lack of maturity at this age. So. I think that's a sign of maturity. Papa Bear. It is, I know. And, and and Mother Beth doesn't tolerate any of it. We used to go, oh, that's nice. <laughs> we'll work on that. We'll we'll bring that to consideration. No, we're not. We, <laughs> you yeah. know, we'd love to, I'd love to see you come help us. We'll, we have this work time. That's what I'm on. saying. Yeah. That's, that's my answer yeah, to them. Yeah, what yeah. are you doing to help yeah, the situation? Yeah, and, and, and it'd be humble. Sometimes people have good ideas. Yeah. You know, it, but the, the spirit in which it's brought, that's the everything. The spirit yeah. in which it's met with. I yeah. didn't say return. No, no. But met, met with. with the standard. Yep. You know, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yep. And and if it's a blessing, then it's yep. going to prosper. If it's not. So, but I think I think everybody, part of this worship leader, Southern Illinois, I wanted people to hear the real there. Yeah. Because worship leading and pastoring today is, it's vulnerable. When it's you have very. stripped yourself off on a Sunday, you've given your whole self unto that week, you get off the platform. I hate to tell people, this sounds terrible, but you're like spiritually naked. Yeah. And, 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 and I know people want to help you then, man, maybe wait till Tuesday. Just tell me good job. And we'll see after you get through the workout and we'll, we'll talk Tuesday and we'll work through the details. And I, I struggle with that because there's Thursdays that I'll lead worship for two hours. I'll get up there and I'll preach. And then I'll get somebody being critical that I just poured everything I have, everything I have. Yeah. I've, I've spent, and the vessel's four, empty. spent 40 hours this week preparing for it, gave it my all for three hours and then now you're going to be critical. Yeah, yeah. And we're not talking about guys being <laughs> people being constructive. That, that we're there's talking a difference. About, there's a difference. We all there's know a difference. Is, so yeah. so I, I think that's a really good thing to learn. On Ben, any other final questions? Any other words? What do you think? Um, I think the critics could be avoided by just creating an elevator on the stage that just lifts you up into the ceiling yeah. at the end of the service. <laughs> yeah. I'll I think tell you. just having a humble heart with worship, <laughs> really just, and if you're humble with everything, then it just, and there's a way to approach issues. If you got legitimate issues, you yeah. know, yeah. just, just do it with a positive attitude yeah. and a good heart and, and don't do it right when we come off the platform, you know, you know, give me five minutes. Don't write us a 20 page letter on Monday either. Come buy us a cup of coffee. Hey, it's great. I, you know, don't hide behind a fake texting app and send me a text. Right. Yeah. Boy, I hate that one. Just, they just come tell me a, honestly, yeah. A text from a fake number. Well, I think there's a lot to learn here. I think, I think, I think the big key is I, I love what you guys have said is all the way through this yeah. is be real, be honest, and be authentic. And you can do that with your as you bring questions and, and comments. And you know, you can always ask somebody, you know, I, I don't understand why you did this this week. Could you help me understand? Yeah. You know, how were you be, why were you being led but this that, way? But there's that's other different. ways. Yeah. It's, why were you I, being led? What, what, was God speaking to you through somebody else? And then mm -hmm. you could go, Oh, yeah, I did that song. I hate that song too. But I felt like this is what got in. Oh, yeah. oh, cool. There's a way to ask those questions yeah. and to be constructive and, and stuff like that. So, uh, well, hey, it's been wonderful. You guys have got an incredible trip. Thank so you. Let me just say, Lysource Church meets 1130 on Sunday. Uh, they have 7 o'clock service on Thursday. They have an encounter for people looking for recovery groups on Friday. They have a meal before that. Check that out. Go to at Life Source of West Frankfurt on Facebook. Find out what's going on. Check out what's happening. I think Bailey is a good representation of that body. I think... Uh, Joshua is. is a good example of what God's doing in the life of that church. Pastor Brent is an extraordinary man of God. Yes, you is. guys have got a very difficult uh, field that you plow in because you're plowing amongst people that are coming out of recovery and all kinds right. of issues. But you guys are getting great victory. I see picture after picture of people being baptized yeah. and giving testimony, and and the devil just takes a beating. So if you've got God is good, if you've man. got a yes. devil and you want to get rid of it, Life Source Church in West Frankfurt. Uh, come on out, check them out. Come ready to worship. Don't show up late there. Come ready to worship. Yeah. You, don't, you don't even know what's happening. You're not going to have a choice when you show up. I think we'll send all our people up. To, maybe we just send our people up there for like three weeks and they get retrained. Just get retrained. <laughs> we get retrained. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Ben, uh, Lucas, it's been great. 
You guys have been great. Lucas, we don't hear from Lucas yet because he doesn't have a microphone. So if you want to be a My Patreon sponsor, you can help us be a sponsor <laughs> or a partner and we'll buy him a microphone. Check that out at My Patreon. Uh, go to onthedoc.org. Check out our programs and different episodes and stuff. You can see season one there as well. Find out more about season two. And this is in season two series. And go to info at onthedoc.org. Email us if you've got any questions. You'll find us at YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. Also on Google Play, Facebook, Roku, Rumble, and Sermonet. We'd love to hear some of your information on the five media partners, social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, and Getter. Go let us know. If you're, if you're, not, if you're mad about something we said, just say it to us constructively. Be positive in the way you do it. Lift up the name of Jesus. Build up the team. And let's do that. Hit subscribe, like, notify. Love to hear your comments. And again, go to the Patreon. Check us out. And go to Life Source Church if you're up that way. They'd love to have you. Especially if you're looking for a church on a Thursday. They're the only ones that are doing it. And we'd love to have you on a Wednesday as well down here at Marion, Illinois at 6.30 on Wednesdays, 10 o'clock on Sundays. Check us out at cotv.com if you just want to check us out, see what's going on. We'd love to to have you at community so again guys thank you bailey thank you so much thank you thank you Pastor. joshua thank you for being in again it's lucas be and ben guys. thank you i hope you've enjoyed on the dock now check out as we wrap up this series an incredible worship piece done by worship pastor joshua corrales right now we'll see you soon again on the dock of the bay i'm pastor troy Yeah.
Jesus be the center It's all about you Yes, it's all about you Cause from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center It's all about you Yes, it's all